Hey gang, what's up? Today I would like to talk to you uh, about how my first Ironman went, like a race recap. It's a follow-up video to the How I Train video. And I would like to share with you some stuff so that you don't make the same mistakes that I made. I am stoked that I crossed the finish line, but I am absolutely not stoked on the time because I know there is massive room for improvement, but I'm grateful nonetheless. So starting off, Ironman Tallinn is a 3.8 km swim in a lake. It is a two loop bike course, 180 kilometers and a 42 kilometer run marathon distance in the city of Tallinn. I chose this race because it has a lake swim, flat bike, fairly, I thought, normal run course. How did I approach the race? This being my first race and being full of doubts about how it was gonna go down, I had no clue. It was, this was the first time I did a full distance. I had no time goal, everybody told me, leave that stuff at home and just focus on getting to the finish line, finish the race. So prepping for the race, I had my giant bike with uh, triathlon bars, hub wetsuit and basic run gear like Hoka Bondi 6, which I prefer for the cushion. What I did focus on was the nutrition aspect because it was going to be the first race to be done under COVID regulations. So it wasn't very clear what the age stations were going to be like. So I chose to have more fuel for the bike than I thought would be necessary to actually have. One sugar water bottle with 300 grams of sugar and 300 mils of water. One Noco energy drink diluted with water in the back. One 950 mil water on the bike. <laughs> yeah, no, that is a lot of weight. Four energy gels and some vegan gummy bears. The days leading up to the race, I focused on getting high carb nutrition, so I would top up my glycogen stores. That was just basically a lot of pasta. Finished up the last training sessions and I focused on getting as fresh as possible to the starting line. What would happen the day of the race would be completely unexpected and it would put me in a place that I had never been in my life and I learned a lot from it. When things don't go as planned, you have to adapt, evolve and deal with stuff as it arises. And that is exactly what happened to me. So race morning, woke up really early, got some breakfast in. I ate cornflakes, rice milk and sugar. Really easy to digest, so as not to tax the digestive system. But like top up the glycogen just before you get to the beginning of the race. Headed out from the apartment, went down to catch the bus to the start line. We got our temperature checked, then I checked my bike uh, that everything was in order, but I had stacked everything the day before. Even the nutrition, it was already all on. I just covered it up for the rain. Everything was fine. So next thing I did was headed to the swim start. Got there, the day was cold. I'm not gonna lie, it was fairly cold because the race was uh, supposed to be in August, but it was actually postponed to September. So it was colder than what it was supposed to be. And the cold was the first thing that I started to get a bit worried about. So I stared at the lake, it was, it, it's a daunting thing. You have to really trust the training you've done and you gotta trust in your abilities. I was confident, so I zipped up my wetsuit. I helped another guy next to me zip his up and I headed to the swim start. So after months of training, I was there at the starting line. Slowly, I made my way towards the uh, race director who was telling people to go. And before I knew it, it was my turn. Three, two, one, go, in the water. And this is the thing that shocked me the most. I headed to the water, I dived in, and it was absolutely freezing. For one split second, I was that guy who had a panic attack and couldn't even start the swim. For one split second, I thought it was over. The day was over. I couldn't even get, get through the swim because it was so cold, it hit me so, so hard. There's this thing that humans have that is called dive reflex. So basically, when you jump into really cold water, your body goes in a bit of panic mode and it kind of like freaks out and wants to shut off everything that is non-essential. But what I did was I trusted in my uh, capabilities and I just started swimming. Swimming one stroke after the other. I wasn't thinking about pace, I wasn't thinking about anything. And here comes the other thing that really put me off. The lake was so murky, you couldn't even see like past your bicep, you couldn't see anything. I couldn't even see the heels of the person in front of me, I couldn't even see my hands, I didn't even see what the hand entry was like. Which meant that I had to sight 
every two stroke. I, I kind of got into a rhythm, like very bad rhythm. Wasn't at all what I was used to in training, even though I had trained in the lake. The conditions were very different because not even be being able to see your hand is really off-putting. It's really a weird thing that I hadn't really experimented in training with. I didn't think it was going to happen that way. The water also was choppy, there was a bit of wind. So one thing I kept on thinking was at the guys in the kayak seeing me swim, they must have thought I was about to drown. They must have thought it was the first time I swam in my life. Technique was out of the window, it was like, I was just pathetic. Let, 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 let's put it that way. And man, I was getting cold during the swim, like seriously cold. My feet were freezing, my face was, was pretty much freezing and my hands also. I kept on thinking, you gotta find joy in this moment. This moment is a privilege. You, you are so privileged to be here. After all that's happened this year, be in the swim, even if it sucks. If it's cold as hell, you need to find joy in this moment because it is a privilege. Before I knew it, I was at the swim exit and I exited the swim, 10 minutes over my target time. But man, I was smashed. I was dizzy, I was confused. I literally, being in the water for that long and the water being so cold, it really, put a dent in me. Like I was, I was like really confused. There was no way I was gonna run to the bike. So I just kind of like walked 10 steps and got back to my senses, let's say, and I got into a jog and headed towards the bike. My absolute priority was get warm. I needed to get warm ASAP because I was like shivering. I slammed in a gel, put on my bike stuff, my wind jacket and everything, and I started cycling. My plan was evolving at this point because I needed to warm up ASAP. I was shivering, so I decided to bike hard, which is a really bad idea, but in that moment, that is literally all I could do. It's the only way I could have imagined to like be able to warm up and get back in the groove. So I biked hard for 10 minutes, uh, even 15 minutes, uh, above what my target power was gonna be, but I did get warm. So. I ended up like overtaking a lot of people, even there was a bit of like problems with drafting and stuff like that because in the beginning everybody is bunched together, but no worries, I had another gel and my nutrition strategy was gonna be one gel and one drink every 20 minutes. But I had to face something that I had never experienced in my life and that was gonna severely influence my whole day. And this is called hypothermia. The swim got me so cold, I, was, I started suffering from hypothermia-induced diuresis, which means basically as soon as you drink something or you eat something, you need to go to take a pee, basically. I had to relieve myself, I don't know, like during the whole bike ride, I would estimate like 20 or 30 times, which is absolutely crazy. Everything that I drank was getting thrown out. This is something that they told me after. I had, I had no clue what I was going through in that moment. The only thing I could focus on was my bike power and maintaining like the zones that I had set for myself. And this was something that, it was causing some discomfort, but it wasn't really impacting my power. So uh, I thought I'll deal with it later. Maybe it'll fix itself. So the bike was flat and kind of windy. So I ended up basically going through the two loops alone. My target power for the bike was around 60 to 70% of my FTP, which sounds crazy low. In training, I thought it was crazy low. You have to run a marathon after your bike. So you need to keep the intensity at a level that is manageable, or at least that was my plan for the race. So I'll put up the bike power here on the screen and the normalized power turned out to be exactly around that target percentage. So I slammed in gels, some gummy, vegan gummy bears, uh, had my drinks, got some stuff from the aid station, bike progressed. I started getting like crazy pain in my glutes and that prompted me to get my cadence a bit more up. I was uh, going to do upper 80s for the whole bike split. I switched to like 92, 93 cadence with a low gear and the glutes just after 20 to 30 minutes, they fixed themselves up. The bike ride was long. It was challenging because that, that amount of time on the bike is always challenging but I was confident in my training and I had already done the distance, so it was, let's say, no problem. I kept on thinking this is absolutely crazy that I'm here in Estonia racing this year, everything that's happened. Even though the swim was like so bad, I should really enjoy this moment and make the most out of it. This is a once in a lifetime thing that's gonna happen. Finished the second bike loop, got into Tallinn. I could see the people on the run course and I was stoked, I, I wanted to get out there, I wanted to go out and run. So I got into T2, I racked my bike, put some vegan gummy bears in my back pocket, put on my hat, changed shoes, and I headed out on the run course for the marathon.
One thing that must be clear is I never thought I need to run a marathon. I always thought I need to run four 10K loops. Breaking stuff down into manageable chunks made it real easy to confront stuff like a marathon, like a distance that is so high on its own that it, it can fill you up with doubt. And I was never thinking, now I have to run a marathon. I was always thinking, I'm gonna run four 10K loops. First loop was gonna be uh, kind of like a test loop, just running comfortable pace at a manageable effort. So I had a target pace in my mind between 5 and 5.30, which was a comfortable, manageable pace. But my real goal was to not walk a single step. I wanted to run the whole marathon. I, I didn't want to stop and I didn't want to walk it. So went out on the course. First loop was like a test loop. Everything was going good apart from the hypothermia and stuff. So at every aid station, I drank Coca-Cola, I drank water, and I ate my vegan gummy bears when I wanted between the aid stations. Actually a lot of fun because there were people on the course, it was a lot of noise, a lot of stuff like that, and it made it a real race spirit. So that was really cool. Second loop started. And this is where I thought, okay, maybe I'll try pushing it a little bit. So I upped my pace. It was going good, actually. I felt kind of good, but then I started getting massive pain, like serious pain, like right here in, in my on my left side, and then on my right side in the same spot, sharp pain. Like, you gotta stop right now pain. And in my mind, the thought was, dude, I'm getting dehydrated. This is something that I need to address right now in order to finish this race. Pace, time, it was all out, out of the window. The only thing I was focusing on was getting to the finish line. So I dropped my intensity. I thought, I'll do five kilometers like this and see how it goes. The pain subsided once I went under a certain heart rate, under 150, or maybe it was 155. It would creep back up straight away as soon as I got into the 160s, like straight away, immediately. So I just thought, dude, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna just keep the heart rate that you can manage and maybe in one hour or two hours, see what's going on. Started loop three, and this is where everything went crazy. It started raining like absolute madness. Like on the course, you, you started getting like these deep puddles where if your foot finished in there, it would be soaked. I had pain in my kidneys. I was kind of like hurting all over, also due to the cold and the hypothermia and all that stuff. But I was making progress. I did not walk a single step. To try and deal with the hypothermia, I thought, Maybe I need to up my calories a bit more. Maybe not only Coca-Cola, but like some solid food and some stuff with maybe more fats. So I started eating bananas, energy bars, and stuff like that, combined always with water. But by the end of the third loop, with the elevation, with the wind, with the rain, with all the stuff that was going on, with, I wasn't even looking at my watch anymore. Like, I was just, I settled into what was go all, all day pace. It had happened once in training uh, before, which was around, I think it was 140, a heart rate, which is really low, but I literally couldn't get it above that uh, number without having pain in, in both my sides. So that's what it was gonna be. I was gonna accept it, take the day for what it was, for a testing round for the future, learn as much as I can, and just make it to the finish line. I'm not gonna lie, something that really sucked was that nobody was there with me. My wife wasn't there, my family wasn't there, my friends weren't there. I was racing alone. I was very wary of going into Ironman because I thought, what if it doesn't live up to the expectations? What if it doesn't live up to what it is in my mind? I was not seeking a time, I was seeking an experience. I was seeking to get to know myself better. I was seeking to dig deeper into what my limits are, to go further than I ever imagined in my life that I could. And on that fourth loop, this all materialized. This became a reality. It was like, I was flooded with like gratitude and emotions like that and thinking about all the journey, all the training sessions, all the sacrifices made, all the injuries and it was a very profound experience. Before I knew it, it was the last four kilometers. By some divine grace, I picked up my pace a bit. I managed to have more energy. I could, I could hear the, the finish line uh, cheers. I could hear the, the announcer. On every loop, they gave you a band. And heading into the fourth loop, where I knew this guy was gonna put on the last band, man, when I put on that final band, it was like, this is the most incredible experience I've ever had in my life. And I couldn't believe this was happening. I literally could not believe this was happening. And in that moment, it was very confused and uh, intense and uh, not as articulated as I'm making it now, but this is what kind of filled my, my brain and my feelings and my emotions. And heading into the finish line shoot, an incredible experience. Like, I can't explain it. I, when I heard the announcers, like saying, Patrick, uh, you are an Iron Man. It was a moment that I literally will never forget in my life. You are an Iron Man. And 
when I crossed the finish line, when I got to put on that medal, I knew I wasn't the same person that I was in the morning. I had given everything I had for that race. I had given every single thing that I had to get to that finish line. In the training, and especially in the race, I had left nothing on the race course. To me, it was a monumental thing. Uh, it was a big statement to myself, to what I'm, I am capable of and seeing what my limits are. This experience enriched me in a lot of ways that I'm, I am still processing them right now. Hearing my name being called out is truly something that I will never forget. And I'm incredibly grateful for all the personal growth I went through in the training. All the personal growth I went through during the race, having to adapt and evolve and change plans. Man, after the finish line, I was like, I was a shell of myself. I was like smiling. I asked a girl to take a photo of me, like next to a fire extinguisher and like paper bags and stuff. And I didn't have any energy to get another photo taken. Like that is the only photo that I have after the finish line. Like I, I sat down, I took my phone out, like I, I texted my wife that I made it. I just sat there and I, ch I chilled out for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, then I tried to get back up. I almost fainted, so I had to sit down and chill out a bit more. But I was, I was stoked, I was like, I was good. After about an hour staying there, I put on one of those fireman uh, blankets, like the gold ones, and I headed to get my bike from T2. Man, I could not walk. And this is where I came up with my new definition of athlete, which is someone who finishes the race and then goes and gets their bike from T2 and cycles home. There was no way in hell I could bend my leg enough to cycle home. So that is what I'm working on for this year, to be able to cycle back home on my own bike after finishing the race. What I want to do in the future is the time of uh, 11 hours and 30 minutes is absolutely not my time for Ironman and I know there is massive room for improvement on the bike but especially on the run. That is what I'm going to work on. Thank you to my team, PPR team, because they really helped during the lead up with insights and tips. Thanks to Sabrina who let me go on crazy bike rides and like be a triathlon widow, like taking me to the lake, watching me swim, then watching me bike for five hours and big up to her. I absolutely have mad respect for her for letting me do it. If there is one key takeaway from this event is I am absolutely humbled by it. I am humbled because Iron Man looked at me, it put me in my place. I am 100% convinced that that race day went how it was supposed to go for my own personal development and athletic development. Really showcased my weaknesses and allowed me to understand better how I have to work for the next year, what I need to work on, what I need to get better at. Final thing I'm gonna say is, during the last month of training, I kept on thinking to myself, this is going to be the only Iron Man I do in my life. The training is too much, the load is too much, the time is too much. It's not that much fun. Well, let me tell you that as soon as I crossed the finish line, I knew for sure that I wanted to do another one. So, yeah, I don't know what that means, but to me, that, that's what happened. Exactly the second I crossed the finish line, I knew I wanted to do another one. Okay, so thank you for watching the video. I hope you found some knowledge from my experience. That is the only thing I can offer. And I hope I got you stoked on Ironman racing because I believe it is a very cool thing to do and it can lead to a lot of discovery in, uh, on our own personal self and on our athletic abilities. If you like the video and you would like to see more stuff like this, please subscribe, put a like. I'm going to be putting out more content like this, like nutrition, how I handle uh, training, racing, what I eat. Peace out and see you in the next one.